Hello, my name is Joanna Barani. I'm a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes educator and author of Good Carbs, Bad Carbs, a book that explains how to enjoy optimum health by eating low glycemic carbs, the right carbs. I have been designing individualized low glycemic meal plans for my patients for nearly 20 years. In this presentation, I will describe the background history of the glycemic index. But before I begin, just a note about the image on the screen. You will see this graph throughout this and other presentations about the glycemic index. It depicts perfectly quickly and slowly digested carbs, exactly what the glycemic index is all about. What is the glycemic index? It is a scale from 0 to 100 that ranks digested carbohydrates by how much they raise blood glucose levels compared to a reference food, which is glucose. In simple terms, the glycemic index measures how quickly carbohydrates hit the bloodstream as energy for the body. It explains what happens to carbohydrates after we swallow them. The foods that are listed on the glycemic index are all carbohydrate rich, as you can see from this slide. All types of starches, like breads and breakfast cereals, both, both dry and cooked, all forms of pasta, rice, soups, starchy vegetables, all dairy and dairy products, fruit in all forms, and any food products that contain any type of sugar, such as honey, maple syrup, white, or brown sugar. And the foods that are not on the glycemic index are the protein-rich foods, all meats, poultry, fish, eggs, cheese, and all forms of fat, oils, butter, margarines, and shortening. In other words, these foods have no glycemic index or GI value. Why is that? Why do only carbohydrates have GI values? Because carbohydrates are the body's fuel of choice. The body chooses carbohydrates first to break down into immediate energy. The body prefers to get its energy for immediate and ongoing daily activities from carbohydrates rather than from proteins or fats. Glucose is itself a carbohydrate, so the body doesn't have to work extra hard to get more glucose from other carbohydrates. How did the formulation of the glycemic index come about? In 1981, a research team at the University of Toronto, headed by doctors David Jenkins and Thomas Wooliver, were looking for an alternative system for classifying carbohydrates. They wanted to improve dietary recommendations for diabetic meal planning that were not based on the exchange system. With regard to carbohydrates, the exchanges made certain assumptions, namely that all digested starches produce a similar after-meal blood glucose response and that these responses would be low and that all digested sugars produce similar after-meal blood glucose responses, and these responses would be high. Dr. Jenkins and his team did not accept these assumptions, which were based on the chemical structure of carbohydrates. They set about determining the physiological effect of different carbohydrates, both starches and sugars, on blood glucose levels. They tested 62 commonly eaten carbohydrate-rich foods like cornflakes and oatmeal, white and brown rice, spaghetti, milk and ice cream, apples, oranges, and bananas on from either five or 10 healthy fasting volunteers. 
They measured either 25 or 50 grams of available carbohydrate from these foods and used that for the test portion. They took finger prick samples every 15 minutes for the first hour and then every 30 minutes for the second hour and plotted the results. They also gave a glucose tolerance test to each volunteer using the same 25 or 50 gram load over the same two hour time frame and plotted those results. The researchers then compared the volunteers' test food results to their reference food results and developed a ranking system based on the differences observed. They called their ranking system the glycemic index. This is how it breaks down. GI values from 0 to 55 have a low GI ranking. Those 56 to 69 have a moderate GI ranking. And 70 or higher have a high GI ranking. What did this research prove? Jenkins data showed that different carbohydrates raised blood glucose levels to varying degrees. The ranking of white bread, for instance, on the glycemic index was measured at 69, which is high even though white bread is a starch. And ice cream, despite its sugar content, ranked a low 36. What this means is that on any given day, a prescribed amount of white bread will have approximately 69% of the glycemic impact of an equal amount of glucose, and ice cream will have approximately 36. Who uses the glycemic index? Well, as you can see from this slide, it's used all over the world in the UK, in Australia, throughout Europe, the American Diabetes Association, the Canadian Dietetic Association, as well as the World Health Organization that has endorsed the protocol for international GI testing. If you are interested in finding out more information about this topic, here are a few websites you can look at. Thanks very much for listening.